Hello, good day viewers. Uh, welcome to another Biology presentation. So right here with me, I have Biology paper 2 for 2016. So specifically, we are going to concentrate on question 4. So this is our question 4 right here. Figure 4.1 shows a certain type of flower. So this is figure 4.1 showing a certain type of a flower that is labeled S, T, and U. So we have our question A right here. Identify parts labeled S, T, and U. So what is the name of the part labeled S? So the part labeled S is the anther. And the part labeled T right here. This is the stigma. And the part labeled U, this is the ovary. Okay? So, these are the names of this uh, type of a flower that we have. Now, before we even look at the other question, we can try to identify the type of pollination that this flower goes. So, looking at the looking at the this type of a flower, you can see that the filaments right here, these are the filaments okay they are long and they are outside okay they are outside the flower then we can also take a look at uh, the the stigma right here okay so this stigma is feathery in order to trap what uh, the pollen grains in the wind okay uh, we can also see that uh, this flower has got no uh it has small and dull colored petals, okay? So we can see that this type of flower undergoes a uh, windy pollination just from these features that it has. Okay, so here first we have answered A, S is the filament, T, the stigma, and U is the ovary, okay? So we've now come to question B right here. So question B, we have one and two we are going to start with question b1 identify the type of pollination that occurs in the flower above so here we have said that it undergoes windy pollination okay it undergoes windy pollination that is our answer right here then for question b2 give two features from figure 4.1 which support your answer in B. So why are we saying that uh, this flower undergoes wind pollination? Okay, so this is the flower right here. So we have said it undergoes wind pollination because when we look at it, this flower, it has, um, the filaments are thin, these filaments right here, they are thin and very uh, very long and they are, hanging outside the flower apart from that when we look at uh, the stigma okay these are the stigmas the stigmas are looking um, feathery okay they are looking feathery in order to trap what the pollen grain in the in the wind so these features have allowed us to be able to identify that this flower undergoes windy pollination okay so those are the reasons that we can give on question B2. Then on question C1 right here, state other type of pollination other than the one mentioned in B1. So here we have said we have wind pollination. So other type of pollination that we have apart from wind pollination, we have insect pollination. Okay, so uh, these were the answers. Alright, so we have said uh, the two features in figure 4.1 which support our answer is that the stigma are feathery to catch pollen carried on the wind. The pollens are in large numbers. Okay, then C1, state other type of pollination other than the one mentioned in B1 above. We have said this is insect pollination. So we have wind pollination and insect pollination. So the difference there is that um, 
in insect pollination, normally insects are used in order to transfer the pollen grains from the anther to the to the stigma. But in wind pollination, uh, it's the wind that is normally used to transport the the pollen grains from the anther to the stigma. Okay. Apart from that, they are also different in terms of the the features. Okay. So we have answered this question. Let us now look at uh, another question. So we now come to question C2 right here. So question C2 reads, give two characteristics of the flower where the type of pollination mentioned in C1 above takes place. So in C1 above right here, we have said this is insect pollination. So they want us now to give two characteristics. Okay? Two characteristics of insect pollination of the flower where insect pollination takes place. So in insect pollination, the flower, it has got certain features, okay? And these features, you find that it has got uh, large, brightly colored what, petals. The petals are colored and they are very large so that they attract the insects, okay? Apart from that, the same flower, it has got uh, a scent. And that scent, it also attracts the insects so that they pollinate on the flower. That is in insect pollinated. Also, uh, you find that uh, it has got the stigma that is very, very hairy and sticky. Okay? So that the uh, pollen grains that the insect has um, transferred from one flower to the other flower, they will be able to stick on the stigma. Okay? So those are some of the, the reasons that we can give. The reasons are many, but we can just mention the few. So we have said... They produce scent that attract insects. They also produce nectar on which insects see, uh, feed. Okay, so we can mention these uh, from the reasons that I've stated. So there are many. Alright, so we've now come to the end of our session. Thank you so much everybody for being so attentive. This has been your presenter, Mr. Mlenga. Bye-bye.